This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. That's right, the Bulldog. Yours truly. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, as you know, as Louis Brandeis said in the Supreme Court decision, life is hard. But you know what? You just got to keep on trucking, don't you? Uh, today, we're going to have Radio Superbity as always. I had a nice short memo yesterday and promo as I pointed out that brevity is part of superbity and I feel like the last few days that I've done radio I've let these young whippersnappers pull me down drag me down to their level and I can feel it in my bones at times that the Bulldog Nation needs to hear from the commander and you need to hear it straight you need to hear it strong and you need to hear the truth about everything that's going on in the world. And of course, we know what's going on in the world, don't we? We know that the politicians have got the country screwed up in Washington. We know that the politicians have got the region screwed up in their respective jurisdictions. We know that there's injustice going on around the world. We know there's stupid freaking people in the world. We know mean people suck. We also know that in America, it's always going to be, or at least should be, God, the Constitution, and capitalism. Economics 101. And you know, it amazes me, it amazes me how they force us to swim upstream day after day after day after day. Nothing is easy, is it? I don't know what you are. If you're a plumber, I will bet you that the local governments are a pain in the ass when it comes to issuing permits for new projects. I'll bet you the regulations for what you can and cannot do for existing projects is a pain in the ass. Let's say that you are a doctor. How about all those forms you got to fill out? How do you like Obamacare? I've sat down and I've just... There isn't one single doctor that says Obamacare is a good thing for them. Do you know who it's good for? It's good for hospitals. Hospitals. But uh, I talk about this all the time. I have in the past. But the time for talking is over. There are two types of people in the world, as you know from our Bulldog Nation motto. There are talkers and there are doers. I like to think of myself, although I make my living talking, that I'm very much a doer on all fronts. And you know what there's a need for in the tri-state? And my first reaction was, well, I kind of just do this on my own. And I said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You're on Class X Radio every morning for three freaking hours. What a golden opportunity you have to do what you want to do. Drum roll. Here's what I want to do. I was just joking. That was a figure of speech. Oh, God, yeah, I got a drum roll, an actual drum roll. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, is I am going to be a voice for you. I am going to be that voice in the wilderness, that voice in the big canyon that usually no one can hear because you're stuck down there in the canyon and nobody can hear your cries for help your cries for truth, your cries for justice. And here is what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, needless to say, that uh, I know Bill Spry, the owner of this radio station, would love to have the money of the big spenders for marketing and advertising here in the Tri-State. And what I'm going to propose, or what I'm going to do, might be the thing that the doctor ordered for Bill Spry and Class X Radio. It'll be interesting to see if the big spenders spend money on Class X Radio to silence me. Because unless they silence me in that manner, in other words, come on, let's face it, you can't dog an advertiser, right? Right. Do you realize that every single day there are news stories? that never, ever, ever hit 5, 9, 12, 19, or the rag that we know is the Enquirer, because 
They are bought and they are paid for with their advertisers. And you say to yourself, well, how, how, Bulldog, I cannot be true. Yes, it is. Because I'm a newsmaker, not just a news reporter. Children's Hospital. Can we not all say that Children's Hospital is a wonderful you know, hospital in this community? Thank God we have Children's Hospital. In fact, I saw last night, they're like the third best Children's Hospital in the world. Yet, they can participate in experimental surgeries on Haley Reuters, my client's skull, which caused permanent brain injury to her. And you don't see it on 5, 9, 12, 19, or the inquiry. That's incredible. Is, is it news? Is it news that our local children's hospital performs experimental skull surgeries with BMP3 from Medtronix? Do not tell the parents about it. And that's not freaking news? Hmm. Seems like news to me. Isn't it? You know what? I hope I'm never in a full bore scandal of any kind. But if I am, I hope the local news media, 5, 9, 12, 19 in the rag we know is the Enquirer, treats it like Barry Larkin's involvement with Heise, How, uh, Heidi Heiser in the Dirty.com. Nada. Nothing. But, oh, oh, oh. But if there's some news about Sarah Jones, oh my God, let's run with it. Oh. What I'm basically trying to say, and I deal with these folks every day, I have friends at 5, 9, 12, 19 in the Enquirer. But when the, it's all said and done, they all freaking suck. They never get the story freaking right. I can sit there and tell them 9,000 times, Sarah Jones is not asking for a freaking $11 million at the trial. Yet, there's Channel 19 with on the bottom, there's Channel 12, there's Channel 9. They report it all over again. You know freaking why? Because they're not that freaking bright. I'm ready to rip it today, folks. Tell your neighbors to tune in. Now I'm going to take you down a little bit. This is Dylan, Abraham, Martin, and John. It's appropriate, though, because you know what this is about? This is about fighting for justice on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Uh, throughout the show today, I am going to remind all of you who are listening, but here's the deal. We are going to be the media source that breaks original news that 5, 9, 12, and 19, and the reg we know is the Enquirer, will not air. Now let me tell you the rules, folks. It's the same rules in journalism. Yours truly is going to be the editor, okay? I shall be the supreme commander of Bulldog Nation News on Class X Radio. And if I have any see anything that's along the line, I will, of course, consult with Bill Spry, the owner of the radio station. We're not going to slander anybody. We're not going to libel anybody. That's the written word. We're not going to do any such things. We don't want dirt. We don't want any of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you right now, if you have a legitimate news story that for some reason all the other, oh I forgot the big one too they, they, they made me shut up a few times I'm going to tell you if you've got a news story you have a news story that you can support because you know what I'm going to check my facts but if you've got a news story about somebody something that's newsworthy that's important to this community to know about and you can't get 5, 9, 12, 19 in the Enquirer to do a damn thing about it, you email it to me and all your supporting documentation, eric at ericdeters.com, and stories that we check out that are true, that are relevant, that are newsworthy, not just to drag somebody down. I don't give a dang who's doing who. I really don't. What I do care about is newsworthy stories. And just so you know, that whole thing relative to Barry Larkin is relevant as it relates to the dirty.com and the fact that he's being charged with extortion. Or at least there's a grand jury in LA. Check that out, 5, 9, 12, and 19. I said on these airways, and I'm saying it again, I know they listen, by the way, they all get my newsletter. 
Why doesn't somebody pick up the phone and call Joe McNally, U.S. Attorney, L.A., is a grand jury convened against Nick Ritchie for extortion? It is the Barry Larkin, Heidi Heiser matter, one of the matters involved. Answer, yes. Yes. Will they do it? Hell no. Hell no. You know why they won't? Because it doesn't involve Sarah Jones. They only want to, they only want to cover Sarah Jones. Now, I get an email today from a couple television stations. And by the way, the one thing I do appreciate television stations do is they always call and check, you know, ask me for a comment, so forth and so on. And, and, and I want to tell you this, I really do like the reporters. Those are the people that I deal with. I really like the reporters. And I like most of the anchors. The problem is that somewhere between the news being reported and what ends up on the screen isn't always what's supposed to be up there, if you know what I mean. But you know what? I get this email. Is Sarah, did Sarah Jones violate her probation? Well, let me tell you something. For her work, it's very important to specify that, as a request of mine, as a result of the federal lawsuit and all of the BS in the aftermath, Willie agreed to interview her. And she went over there and got interviewed. Chuck took her. Brought her back. It's 45 minutes. Outstanding interview. Well, guess what? You're not going to believe this. Somebody couldn't handle that. It just drove them nuts. Oh my God, Sarah Jones has not committed suicide yet. Let's keep going until we finish her off. Let's make her life so hellacious. By golly, they hated to hear the joy in her voice on Willie's show. They couldn't stand to hear the fact that even though she had to go through a divorce, had to go through a felony prosecution, had to be home incarcerated for 10 months, had to be publicly humiliated with the stuff on the dirty.com, and then she had to lose her job, had to lose her profession. No, 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 no. Not enough. Not enough at all. We want more. We gotta get more. We gotta, we gotta, ru we gotta ruin her some more. It's just not enough. So, guess what happens? Somebody calls probation and parole, or the court, okay, and reports this. Now, she's allowed to go Ohio relative to work, and as we pointed out, that was related to work. It was related to her case. And guess what? She works on her own cases, along with the other cases she works on. It was totally work-related. Guess who paid her? Me. She was on the clock when she did it. Guess who told her to do it? Or asked her to do it? Me. Okay, her boss. Alright? Now listen to this. They send this to me. This is the information they got. Alright? Which I find very interesting. Sarah Jones was granted five years probation for the above offense due to Sarah's employment with Eric Dieter's law firm and being a student at the University of Cincinnati. Jones is permitted to be in Ohio for work school purposes only. Jones must receive permission from probation or role to be in Ohio. Anything else? Violations. Leaving state without permission of parole officer. This officer was made aware that Sarah Jones was in Cincinnati on January 29, 2013, doing a live talk show with 700 WLW. The interview was related to Jones' involvement in the court system with both her 12 CR and her... No, it wasn't. It was focused on her federal freaking case. Jones did not have permission to be in Ohio for this talk show interview. Respectfully, she didn't need any permission. The officer will place Jones on electronic monitoring and she must pay for the service. By the way, she's allowed to go anywhere. She's not home incarcerated, but she's got this electronic monitoring. Now, the, the only reason why I'm saying this is because the television stations are reporting it and they contacted me. We chose not to talk about it just because who after the federal court was like, hey, let's just move on now until the next trial. No, no, no. Those of you that think we go seek all this God darn attention, no, 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 no. Would explain herself. But now here is some interesting questions that I have. And I'm going to get the answers. Okay? Numero uno. This 
probation officer. Sorry, Austin. <laughs> Guess what? He only hears from, he tells Sarah, from people in the criminal justice system. Why? Because Sarah doesn't violate her probation. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. Why? Because I got it from a WLW talk show host who told somebody who I know tells the truth. That Rob Sanders was out to get Sarah for that interview. He being the Commonwealth attorney who recused himself because he was really scared of me and he used the fact that I had sued him as the excuse. So he recuses himself for virtue of this prosecution, but not for probation. And the bottom line is, I want to know who contacted the court or who contacted the probation and parole. I want to, I want to know who did that. Now, I want you to know that if Judge Summy just happened to be listening to WLW radio, something which I doubt she does, and she heard this, well, can't do anything about that. That's, that's how it all was found out. It's fine. But I don't believe that for a minute, and I won't believe that for a minute until Judge Summy says so. Now, if, if it was Rob Sanders, do you see a problem with the guy who recused himself from prosecuting her doing an anonymous or non-anonymous interference with her probation, which wasn't a probation, and guess what else? I'm researching the law. It seems to me that if she's considered having a probation violation, she's entitled to a hearing. Did she get one? No. On the other hand, you know what, Sarah, wanting to get this big matter, just accepted what the probation officer wanted to do. It's incredible. It drives them nuts. It drives them, and you know, I bet you it really drove them nuts when they thought she was suing for $11 million and she only came up one vote short. I bet you that really drove them bonkers. You know what? They all need to go see Les Miserables. Hey, Robbie boy, why don't you take your whole freaking staff and go see Les Miserables? You have no humanity. By the way, the letter that I wrote to him is classic bulldog. In light of what's going on now, with it all being the news, maybe I should share my letter to Robbie, which is how I refer to him, Robbie. And the only reason why Robbie's upset is because he got a communications degree from Tulane University, but he can't find a job in radio. It's bottom line. I'm going to tell you something, folks. <laughs> you know what? I try. I try not to jackwagon these freaking people like Rob Sanders. But I think I have an obligation to the public, he's a public official, to expose him for what he is. An unethical prosecutor. Doesn't have the talent to be the prosecutor. I'm going to tell you right now about unethical. I know that he kept Stephen Scott in jail for five months when his office knew he was innocent. I know he picked up the phone and had Nicole Howe arrested and destroyed her teaching career when the police officer was going to give her a lie detector test. I know that he was showing text messages that were supposed to be confidential to friends and family. I don't know about family, I know it was friends. Neighbor. Got it for a fact. There's more. He didn't, his investigator didn't want to prosecute Terry Williams, but he had to do it because Terry Williams sued the cops. If you live in Kenton County, you got a huge problem, folks. His name is Robbie. Robbie Frat Boy Prosecutor. Ro Robbie, no one thinks you're sexy. Everyone thinks Garrett and Jake are sexy on Class X Radio. It's a bulldog on Class X Radio. I'm going to take a break into my hell raising to let everybody know that I'd appreciate if you go to City Beat and vote for me as best lawyer, best talk show host, best troublemaker. Class X Radio is the best radio station, and we have a link there. Uh, today in history... Pierbont Morgan, that's J.P. Morgan, forms U.S. Steel Corporation. It made Andrew Carnegie worth $300 million. And that was in 1901. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, the first talkie, was released called Modern Times. I like that. 
1969, Vince Lombardi became part owner, vice president, GM, head coach of the Redskins. Dun, 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 dun. 1988, the first primetime wrestling match in 30 years. It was Andre versus Hogan. And Andre won. Wow. Uh, today's birthday include Bobby, I'm a Jack Wagon Brown, Chris SNL 46, that's Parnell, Tim Meadows 52. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm a lady man. Is this clean? <laughs> Jake? Okay, Jake yeah, said it's clean. Quiet. I was a little worried about those things. <laughs> My life sucks. I'm a lady man. Roger Stahlbach, Roger the Dodger, Dodger, Roger Bacon. Excuse me. How did I say Roger Bacon? I apologize. Purcell Marion. I knew that. I just misspoke. Purcell Marion, United States Navy and Dallas Cowboys finest. 71. Henry Hank Aaron. 79. I'm pleased to report no military deaths. You know what? we got a great daily scripture. Psalm 36.5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Today's weather, partly cloudy, high at 37. Wednesday, mostly sunny. Thursday, mostly cloudy. Facebook Feel Good Song is a great song. It's Outlaws, Green Grass and High Tides Forever. I encourage us to play that. A useless and interesting facts. Five Card Poker has 2,598,960 possible hands. How do you like that? Jake, is there anything going on in traffic out there? Nothing. Good. Uh, each time the tide rises, every one of us loses a fraction of an ounce of a weight. The weight is regained when the tide falls. Hmm. <laughs> it takes 3,000 cows to supply the NFL with enough leather for a year's supply of footballs. Save the cows! <laughs> uh, a sizable oak tree during a typical growing season gives off 28,000 gallons of moisture. Now here's a fun fact for you. William, you did a great job today. Pittsburgh is the only U.S. city, city with three sports teams that what? Hockey, baseball, football? No, no, no. They what? All same colors. Wear the same colors. That's a great trivia fact. Yeah, it's pretty cool. A quarter of the horses in the U.S. died of a vast virus epidemic in 1872. Horrible colors, by American way. life and industry were crippled. You know the worst colors are the colors of coming to Latin school in the Green Bay Packers. Yellow and green. Harlan County Green Dragons, I think, were green and white. Green, that bright green color is just a yeah. bad. Oregon Ducks, yeah. ugly. Oh, I like Oregon. Oh, no. so. You've got to go. you got to go with red and black. Great combination. Or blue, white, and silver. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> Oregon is more of that, like a silver and green. Mm -hmm. And Nike makes them a new uniform every game, so... It would take half the people in the U.S. between the ages of 18 and 45 to run the nation's telephone system if it was computerized. Wow! Folding money was invented by the Chinese. It was made of deer skin. Hmm. All right, we got it. We got to give this guy Oracle status. When Joseph Gaetti invented toilet paper in 1857, he had his name printed on each sheet. You know, I want to know if there's a rumor that Mark Mallory has his name, his initials monogrammed on each sheet of his toilet paper. Joseph Gaetti, the inventor of, inventor of toilet paper. Wow. If you counted for 24 hours a day, it would take over 31,000 years to reach one trillion. So don't even try to start reaching the trillion count number, just telling you. All right, we come back, folks. We're going to have pop culture. We'll see if anybody crashed, and I'm going to just keep on renting. This is, this is a great song. Why? Because it's by the Outlaws, a great band, and I'm an outlaw. It's also Green Grass and I, one of the best jams of all time. We're not going to do the whole nine minutes, but we'll get you all the way through the lyrics on Class X Radio. We're not interested in dirt. For dirt's sake, we're interested in dirt if it's relevant. Um, but, I, you know, there's a real problem in this community. 
People are getting shut out with worthy news stories. So for, don't always remember, you can count on me to air it. Uh, I can tell by the screen there's nothing going on in traffic, so I'm not even going to give you a chance to say hi, Shannon. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Wasn't that very polite of me? Yes. Um, I was ranting and raving about uh, how there's some news stories that never see the light of day. And the reason why they don't receive the light of day is because advertisers block them. Block them. And, um, you know, it's a shame that uh, it has to go public. And, and how about this? Channel 9 does this this morning, okay? Channel 9 reports that Sarah Jones is in trouble with the law again on an on a, uh, alleged probation violation when, in fact, it involved her doing an interview at 700 WLW with Willie. And I don't think it's a probation violation at all. At all. Was not given a hearing. And get this. They leave it. They know that's what it was. They leave it silent as to what it was. So, they let the viewers think, what'd she do? What'd she do? What'd she do? That is BS journalism, Channel 9. I got a lot of friends over there, but that is BS journalism. Here's my letter to Robbie. Here, Robbie. You and Lisa Wells. I demand an explanation how you can be actually involved, ethically involved in Sarah Jones' probation when you recused yourself from prosec your prosecution. I demand an explanation what your role was in the recent probation review of Sarah Jones. Now this is true. What I'm about ready to read to you is true. Frat boy prosecutor himself. You made a reference to her by tweet before she even knew someone made it an issue. Now how does Rob Sanders tweet that Sarah's interview on WLW was a probation violation and don't before anybody else knows? Hmm. I know for a fact at least one talk show host claimed the day of Sarah's interview with Willie, Tuesday, January 30th, you were, quote, out to get her, and this was being discussed at the station. Did you or someone at your behest file a complaint to the court or the probation officer? Did you or someone on your behest contact the court or probation officer? Did you or someone on your behest contact the media and specifically WCPO? who guess what? The first to report it. You are further directed to preserve all social networking texts, electronic emails, and voicemails pertaining to this issue. I demand an explanation of whether or not you showed text messages of Sarah's prosecution to third persons including lawyers, neighbors, friends, and others. You are a petty, mean, vindictive, and jealous person who does not have the ethics, the temperament, the judgment, or the talent to serve as Commonwealth Attorney? I think that's a pretty good description. You can mock, taunt, and ignore this letter in your frat boy style all you want. I just want the explanation or no explanation. That way you will have no room to claim you were not given the opportunity. Finally, I must put your conduct in this Sarah Jones probation in context and perspective. Now just think about this, folks. This guy prosecutes felonies. And he gets all excited about the possibility of Sarah Jones. She's doing interviews she shouldn't be doing. Which, by the way, again, was not a violation of her probation. While consumed with Sarah Jones, who served her time and has the right to move on, you ignored a video of Officer Byrd murdering Michael Godawa. Murder. You passed on that one. Radio interview by Sarah Jones? Tweet. Report. Pursue. Murder. Pass. You lost your soul. We have a video of the finish line showing Michael Bird, excuse me, Officer Bird murdering Michael Godawa. Video. Plain as day. And uh, Rob Sanders looked at that and says, uh, I, I, I can't tell how he died. I can't tell when the gun was shot. It's criminal. All right?
right? And let's not forget that your office allowed Stephen Scott to stay in jail for five months knowing he was innocent. You can focus all you want on the fact that the law gives you immunity and I was sanctioned. I attempted justice. You lost your soul. And let's not forget how you ordered Nicole Howe's arrest and ruined her career when the police officer offered a lie detector test. I attempted justice. You lost your soul. And let's not forget how you ignored your own investigator in the Terry Williams case. I attempted justice. You lost your soul. Sarah has been to hell and back. If she commits suicide in a desperate attempt to just end it all, would you be satisfied? I often wonder about that, Robbie. You just cannot handle that Sarah didn't go to jail and she came one vote short from SmackingTheDirty.com for a few mil. And you just can't handle it. You little, little, little man. Little, 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 little man. Well, by the way, folks, I have challenged this Jack Wagon over, he's bigger than I am, over and over and over again. Gully man, gully man, to get in the ring in an MMA fight for charity. And he continues over and over and over and over to refuse. And you know what? He showed up at the fight that I had. Oh, he wanted to drive over there and see that officer kill me. <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> he won, but I didn't get killed. But I did lose pretty quickly. Uh, within two minutes. <laughs> oh, you had a good run. In there. Had a good run. Play a song for me. When we come back, we'll do pop culture on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. And then going out there in traffic. No, it's all clear so far. Hey, while I respond to Channel 5, will you talk about the uh, animal fact of the day or something that 20-year-olds can handle? Oh, Just don't um, get it too serious where you guys spot. fall off the uh, intellectual um, cliff. I don't know if this is true or not. I did hear this and I've read it before, but I'm not sure if you can really uh, prove it. But beetles, the population of beetles, um, all species, weigh a third of the, of the world's masses in beetles. Really? I did, I did hear that. I don't, know if, I don't know how they prove that, I guess just by numbers, but... One third? A third of the world's mass <laughs> is beetles. I think there's more beetles than any other population. Of, of just like the individual beetles or like the weight, the combined weight? Well, the combined weight of beetles, yeah, not one single. There's that many freaking beetles out yeah, there? I think so. Wow. I, there's there's, more, no there's way more beetles true. than any other species, I think. No way. Yeah. It, Hmm. That's a whole hell that's a lot, of, a lot of beetles. A lot of beetles. But if you think about it, there's so many different ones you see. You know, you got water beetles and that just around this area. A lot of beetles out there. A lot there. of dung beetles. A lot of ants. A lot of ants. <laughs> I would think it would be ants, birds. but ants probably just don't have as, they're not as big. You know, so they probably don't have as much weight. To yeah, them. but like beetles aren't big compared to other They can species. be though. How big does a beetle get? What's the biggest beetle? I'm sure there's one bigger than your hand. Yeah, on the rainforest, I'm sure that there's, there's ones with big horns <laughs> but on. But still, how much would that weigh? Two pounds, okay. maybe? Maybe. Maybe a pound, maybe up to five pounds? Hmm. So I have a question. Yeah. Since oh, um, I have no brothers, so I thought I'd ask you guys. At what age do you guys, or do you ever stop? We have puberty. It's probably around, <laughs> uh, what, the 13, 12, 13, 13, 12. No, is there ever an age where you guys stop kissing and telling? Or is that just always oh, going to happen? Always happen. And just, gonna you are always going to talk about it with your friends? Yeah, just do it. Always, okay. Yeah, always happens. Glad to know that. Yeah. What <laughs> happened? Do you have like a story? I have a, to... I have a friend. That, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a friend. <laughs> you know, a friend happened. of mine. Uh -huh. um, had sex with some guy. Yeah, yeah, she did. And he ran into someone else, and it just... Came up, so I was just curious if this ever stops. What if somebody just come up to her and be like, "Hey, I heard you had sex with." Uh... Pretty much, yeah. Whoa! Isn't that bizarre? Not bad. That's pretty. Good. I feel like yeah, it always happens. Eskimo so. brothers, as, as, you call this. <laughs> as you can see, folks, <laughs> I definitely called that one, didn't I? <laughs> wow. Well, it is appropriate. We're going to do uh, Did pop you know culture. The fact? I'll take Shakespeare. This is things you don't, you won't hear down south. You will not hear this in the south. Alabama way. I'll take Shakespeare for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> Duct tape won't fix that. Honey, I think we should sell the pickup and buy a family sedan. 
We don't keep firearms in this house. <laughs> Too many deer heads detract from the decor. You know what, folks? I know you're laughing. These three folks, who are obviously not from the South, are stuck up Anderson, Fort Mitchell, and where you live, Beachmont. Uh, Amelia, she... They can't even get a good Southern joke. Yeah, you know why? Because these people from the South will never be on, him, on Jeopardy. Donald Trump caught a lawsuit against Bill Maher in California for $5 million. He claimed he would donate to charity if he proved... He was not born with a relationship between a mother and orangutan. <laughs> By the way, the defense, and this is a defense, is if everybody knows it was a joke. Uh, I think we all know that was a joke. Yeah. Boomer, a Siasin, NFL denies it. He says that during Beyonce's rehearsals last week, the power of the Superdome went out twice. Ooh. All those lights, all those electricity, well, I called that right off the bat. Uh, the Super Bowl, third most watched event in TV history, 108 million. I knew we should have put a Class X radio ad on there. Bill, I told you. Joe Scarborough says the NRA arguments are stupid because, oh, like children deserve the same amount of protection as the president's children. No, dippity doo dog. We mean if he's allowed to have a gun to protect his kids, there should be a gun protecting the kids in school. All right, in sports, Cashmere Wright is slowly getting over his sprained right knee. Uh, Associated Press Top 25, Indiana is 1, Louisville's 11, and guess who's getting votes again? University of Kentucky, who plays tonight at South Carolina at 9 p.m. Votes. Ohio State plays at 9. Was UC still in the Top 25, big boy? Yes, 17. <laughs> uh, Governor Kasich. He says he's going to do the Obama expanding Medicaid. Ha, 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 ha. Now his new budget does call for some tax cuts. That's a good thing. Mm, what else do we have? Boone County Judge Executive Gary Moore. He says, I do hear from companies as well, though, that use the bridge regularly and want to see the congestion improve. Gary Moore, I like you, Gary, but come on, man. Don't be so darn... Controlled by the corporate types. You know what I mean. Let me see, what else do we have? Uh, newlyweds moves to, moves to bleh, foods moves to Northern Kentucky. I didn't know there was a, what the heck do they make? Oh, American style bread breadcrumbs. Man, that's a pretty specialized food. Breadcrumbs. What the hell? What else do we have? East Price Hill, a man was shot in the head about 8 p.m. last night. Suspect still at large. Yeah. David Mann's going to announce today he's going to run for mayor. We got a three way. Got a three way at mayor. <laughs> three way. Roxanne Qualls, John Cranley, and David Mann. Three way. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it only appropriate that we have a three way with Roxanne Qualls, John Cranley, and David Mann yeah. in the land of Skyline and Gold Star where three ways are prevalent? The Eiffel Tower going. Yes. Uh, Covington Bottle Manufacturer Westpac is going to open a 126,000 square foot plant. Well, isn't that special, says church lady. In legal news, Kansas strippers are allowed to get unemployment. You know what? Strippers are employees, too. You know what I mean? It's somebody's daughter up there. Man, oh, man, oh, man. The brass ass. Do we have a song that's longer than four minutes? Uh, Department of Justice says Obama can order Americans to be killed when he thinks it's appropriate. Isn't that going to make you feel good? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, 18 year old Penelope Soto got a month in jail for flipping the bird in the judge's direction. Never a good move to flip off the judge. You know, how about the guy yesterday that punched his defense attorney? Right. Now, what, what, do you know that guy? What was his name? I, I uh, saw, but I didn't know who the lawyer was. An elderly man shot and killed his two neighbors yesterday because he was mad their dog's urine dripped down on the balcony. I think that's a good reason that's to good freaking reason. shoot somebody yeah. right there, right there. Let your dog crap in the neighbor's yard. An Orlando woman's filed a $1 million lawsuit against a former Orlando police officer who groped her outside a nightclub. He groped her. 
cops use that, you know, as an excuse. They go, I'm a cop. Come here, I got to grope you, baby. <laughs> Have you ever been groped by a cop? No. All right. I'm glad you haven't been groped by a cop. Me you ever too. seen Super Troopers? Yeah, that's funny. This is Rodriguez. This is going to be a new regular song we're going to play from time to time. This is Crucify Your Mind on Class X Radio. This is the Moodog on Class X Radio. I tell you right now, man, I've never been punched by my client in court. <laughs> the attorney was Will Oswald. He punched, got punched in the jaw by 20-year-old Loomis as he tried to flee the courtroom before jurors arrived. He wasn't seriously hurt. He took one for the team. You know that guy? Huh? You know that guy? I know who he is, but I don't know him. You know, if he, somebody hit me like that, it'd probably break their wrist or something like that. Did you punch him back? <laughs> Hell yes! Bulldog punches back. I like that movie, uh, of course, Bruce Lee's famous last movie, Enter the Dragon, and a guy breaks a board and he goes, Boards don't hit back. You know what I ought to do? You like a lot of those. Uh, I broke. Asian I've broken a brick before, and I've broken six inches of pine. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. <laughs> I'd and love me, to see this. And let me I'm tell you. Go hey, 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 no, no. Let me tell you what. Now I got. I got to condition my hands. Let me tell you something. I will. I will start working on conditioning. Man, there's no secret to it. It's, it's conditioning your hands to where you'll whop that sucker as hard as you can, and you break it. I tell you something. That's nah, your mind. If you remind me, I'm being serious. I will start conditioning my hands. Man, when I was like full bore into karate, I could take my hands, I'm not kidding you, and hit concrete as hard as I wanted, and it didn't hurt. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I will train, and I will do it live on the radio here. I will break six inches of white pine board. How long you No are, tricks uh, either. It'll be back to back. No pencils in between them. I'm talking about pine. And by the way, it will be against the grain. Excuse me. You can't break wood. Not against the grain. That's fine. I just love to see this. What, right. uh, how much time you need? I'm a badass, Gary, if you didn't know. Uh, well, we'll see if you can snap a board. <laughs> Let's see the brick. I don't care about the board. I'll break a I brick. I can break a board. All right, we'll bring brick in it. You guys can take a whack at it, and I'll take a whack. I don't want to take a whack. I couldn't break it. <laughs> right. Well, how long you need? I'll text you every night. So um, start I, I, I don't need a month. I, it'd probably be just a week or two, right. but uh, I'll, I'll start doing it. I see there's no traffic there, is there? That's good. There's more, no? more talking for me. I think their computers are broken. And if you're just tuning in, folks, uh, because if you have a story about a company or a public figure that 5 9 12, 19 in the Inquirer will not report on, and you've got an original story that you can't get out there, now we're going to fact check. I'm not going to just air anything. You email me at eric at ericgeters.com, and right here on Class X Radio, we will be original news source for you until they start advertising on this radio station, and I can't talk about it. Yeah, send me the dirty stuff, the, the dirt. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a website. You're about the joke, the joke that John McCain told about uh, Iran was going to send a monkey into space? He tweeted, so I'm, I'm, Ahmadinejad wants to be the first Iranian space. Pretty <laughs> good. It says, lighten up, folks. Can everyone take a joke? Yeah, McCain. What about you throwing my friend Bill Cunningham under the bus for just saying, you know, all those things that Willie said that was the truth about Barack Hussein Obama? Can't you take a joke, John? I can't stand John McCain. Uh, Arkansas State House. They passed a bill to allow concealed carry permit holders to carry their weapons into churches. God bless them. God bless them. So we get a church shooting. Yeah. There won't be in that church in Arkansas. You watch. There'll be no church shootings in Arkansas. Hmm. How Pastor Dan feels about that? Yep. Janet Fred Flintstone Napolitano, the head of Homeland Security. And the former Arizona governor is making it known she's considering running for president in 2016. Janet, why? You'll get one half of one percent of the vote. Illinois, okay, Illinois, which by the way is the only state that doesn't have a concealed carry law. Did you all know that? Illinois, where people get murdered and murdered and murdered in Chicago. They are proposing a 25 cent tax on each new pair of athletic shoes. Jeez, oh man. Oh my god. It never. By the way, you guys wouldn't pay attention to this, but Chuck Hagel, who was the nominee for the Secretary of Defense, did a lousy, lousy job. 
I mean, he was pathetic. I agree. It's like he didn't know a damn thing about the defense. I mean, I mean he had no comments, opinions, or facts. Hey, how about this? The average price of gas, $3.52 a gallon. The average U.S. family pays $2,900 a year for gas, 4% of their income. Wow, wow, wow. How much does it cost to fill that? Uh... My truck? Yeah. $132. Wow, that's efficient. Yeah. <laughs> cost me, <laughs> if I do it once a week, so I'm spending $500 freaking dollars a month on gas. And I want to take it. You know what? When I tell my wife, they you know what my wife says? Damn radio. That's my wife's favorite phrase. Damn radio. Damn radio. <laughs> Damn radio. And she doesn't cuss. Damn radio. Hey, um, she doesn't like this. I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of work tonight, honey. Damn radio. Hey, I had a flat tire today. Damn radio. Hey, one of the kids flunked out of college. Damn radio. <laughs> hey, one of the kids ran a red light and got a ticket. Damn radio. <laughs> I overslept today for work. Damn radio. I got the flu. Damn radio. It's, it's just like it's just like uh, uh, Rick James, bitch. It's damn radio. Instead of instead of bitch, she just does the old uh, radio. radio. Let's try this. Young Brands earnings fell 5.3 percent. Damn radio. Earnings fell 5.3 percent. Bitch. I think bitch sounds better than damn radio. Oh, Neanderthals. Researchers in Europe and Australia have examined bones found at Neanderthal sites in Spain. They wonder why they disappeared. They didn't disappear. Hell, there's a Neanderthal in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office in Ken Kennan. Uh, <coughs> Rob Sanders. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, clearing my throat. Fresh crab spread recalled over contamination. Fresh. Giant Food LLC has issued a recall of Gold Coast fresh crab spread. Who eats fresh crab? Spread? scrap? <laughs> All right, here we go. This is something Garrett needs to know. According to British Journal of Sports Medicine, a new study shows that men who watch at least 20 hours of TV weekly have a sperm count 44% lower than those who watch less TV. Men who exercise for at least 15 hours per week have a sperm count 73% higher than those less active. All this proves is he doesn't need to worry about contraceptives. <laughs> uh, real funny. <laughs> At least Here's in a pregnancy the thing. category. I watch sports, mm -hmm. not TV, not mindless uh -huh. drivel on TV, mm -hmm. like MTV, yeah. like oh, you people awful. probably watch. <laughs> the only thing I really watch on TV is sports. You watch Teen Mom when you go home, don't you? And Teen Mom. And Teen Mom. Teen Mom. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Oh my All God. sports, and I work out probably 50 hours a week. So, high sperm. <laughs> <laughs> He's defending his honor. He's defending his honor. <laughs> You're funny, Garrett. I, speaking of Mary, I get the feeling she probably wouldn't like me too much. Yes, yeah, she would. And she'd you'd like rambunctious. You'd like her. Hey, you'd like her too, you know? Uh, I said I didn't like her. I mean, you know. She's a good gal. Right, I gotta meet Mary. You know what? You probably never will because damn radio. <laughs> yeah, she hates me. I'm, you, I'm part of the damn radio. I mean, you're part of the damn radio, man. <laughs> How about that Alabama sheriff? He has a press conference and doesn't talk to the press. <laughs> you see that? That's that hostage? I, I mean, that was weird, man. Really weird. And you know you got problems in uh, Chicago when Jesse Jackson is out there calling the president to come do something. Uh-oh. What about their gun problem? Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry, this is a great feel-good song. Kind of puts you in that rapture state. Hollies, the air that I breathe. So profound on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Either the traffic reports are not coming to the laptop of Shannon, or there's just no traffic to report. Everyone's being really good today. Shannon, would you like to just say something so you don't feel left out of our show? Um, like, do you have something witty and wise that you would like to comment about? Like, whether or not Wild Man Walker appeared on the show or not? I mean, what happened? I didn't I didn't listen. Was Wild Man on yesterday? Right, apparently he's four to six. I wasn't listening until I, I thought he was five to seven, so it was music by the time I turned it on. Because so there's pictures of him on, so I didn't know. Garrett goes, Wild Man wasn't on. Well, you might want to listen from four to six, Garrett. 
Well, at well, least he's doing it from Spry Studios. So thank God. God. Smell up ours. Thank God. You know what I think would be a perfect fit for uh, for Wildman? Who? Me? No way. <laughs> oh, I think. No it's way. Made in heaven. No way. He's a diabetic. Thanks, Barrett. That's awesome. You just Jeez. You guys would be. He owns a bar. Man. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? You're horrible. Well, you're blowing, on, your, just, you're blowing your night out. I'm not going out and John to you. You're, you just blew your night out with <laughs> John. Huh? God, just blew it, baby. Hey, do we do sports yet? Yeah, but wait a minute. I, I got to wish. Let's give Oracle status to Bulldog Nation member Deanna. Who's Deanna? Whose birthday? She's Bulldog Nation member. I protect their privacy. I don't use their last name. Unless it's Robbie Sanders. But go ahead. You got something to say about sports, Garrett? Say it. No. What? what? I just wanted you to read the thing and then I'll have some commentary about it. Read what thing? You know, your sports page. Okay, UK plays tonight. You think they're going to win? Probably not. They play South Carolina. Probably, yeah, they'll win. Yeah, they're going to kick butt. They're not going to lose you again. You watching that Syracuse Notre Dame game? No, who won that game? Syracuse. Big. Yeah. About like 15. Notre Dame really? Didn't score for the first six minutes. They won by that much. Yeah. It was a blowout. I'd say that's a blowout. Especially for a Big East game. You know, the best conference in basketball is where obviously UC plays in the Big East. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings because I'm going to keep this completely anonymous. I'm not going to say names. I'm not going to hurt anybody. But man, it was a stressful day at the office yesterday when a new employee began. The new employee did not know what they claimed that they were supposed to know. And it was embarrassing, it was awkward, it was weird. And I was like, come on, you thought you knew how to do this stuff. It was weird. Fire. No, they quit, thank God. Didn't have to fire. Uh, <laughs> they quit. Hell, on their first know. day? Didn't even make it through one day. Have you ever done have you ever done it like not make it through one day? Yeah. I've quit after one day. Really? Worked at Donato's in high school for uh, a week. Wow. Two shifts. All week. Donato's. Isn't that special? Couldn't hang in there. What? Couldn't hang in Donato's. No, couldn't <laughs> hack it. Too big for me. Couldn't hack it. My God. Donato's. Donato's pizza sucks. Oh, I like it. Unless like they the advertise on this station. Hey, I need to get some Snappy, though. When, when should I go to... You got any, like, gift cards to Snappy? Something? To yeah, I can. I'll just tell them who I am. I, right can, I can hook you up. I can definitely hook you up. Snappy. Snappy tomato pizza. They don't, they don't even sponsor my freaking show and I own part of the goddamn company. Oh, <laughs> Second largest shareholder of Snappy Tomato Pizza and they're not sponsored. You know what my brother says? He's the president. You know what my brother says? You're on in the mornings. I'm like, who cares? People eat pizza for breakfast. You know what I mean? When they're hungover. And we have breakfast pizza and in addition to that, you, you know, breakfast start pizza? putting it in their mind for lunch, you know? Right. Snappy. That once, you, once you have a craving, you don't eat. You're gonna have to get it. See, I know how to roll with this kind of thing. I'll make a little jingle for it. Okay. I was thinking about doing some kind of like one of my voices that I use, like Richard Nixon buy snappy tomato pizza. <laughs> Who would buy a freaking pizza that Richard Nixon? You should do a Bill Clinton. <laughs> Clinton's your best. I think I think you should go out and get some snappy tomato pizza. You know, when I go out and McDonald's is closed, there's a long line. I can't get my egg and muffin. I go on down to Snappy and order a beast, uh, just a whole beast, because when the girls come over, when Hillary's gone, we eat a whole beast. Don't tell her I said that. Is that one of and the And then pizzas? you order the pizza? Huh? Is that one of the pizzas? Yes, the beast. beast. 24. It's the biggest pizza in the world. Yes, it is. I don't know, Adrian. The has Beast. Clifton has a pretty nah, 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 nah. Much better. How about the stoners doing pizza? Hey, dude. <laughs> That's fun, dude. You got some of tonight? Let's go get a beast from Snappy. <laughs> How about some wings? <laughs> oh my God, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah, getting wasted. Getting wasted. <laughs> you know what? I stopped. Let me tell you something. I turned 21, and I remember. Oh, I get to go to the bar. And you go to the Glass Menagerie, you go to the conservatory, the you go down, you go down to it was January's and Caddy's, and you go to um, uh, I don't know all the places, all right? I did that for about 
a few months, and I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> That's what I was waiting to turn 21 for? Just not my kind of thing. You go out, you waste money, you waste time, you get drunk, you strike out, you go home, <laughs> and you do it again. You strike, strike out. out. See, there's where there's you're the wrong. problem. Eric. Hey, hey, hey! I want to. I'm going to go ahead and admit this. Okay. You're striking out. I want to go ahead. I will and go walk. ahead. I will go ahead and admit this. When I was 20, when I mean, it was because I was usually with somebody like my cousin Josh. He would like to fight instead of. No, I'm just teasing you, Josh. Anyway. Oh, you, there's always that guy. Though. But I want to tell you something. I never, ever, ever, and I'm not kidding. And again, folks, remember, I'm a sinner, not a saint. But not one single freaking time did I ever go out to the bar, pick up, and get lucky. Not once. Never. Never. Never, never, never. You know how to play the game, man. Obviously. What? Have you? Now, now, <laughs> now, I usually had a, now, I usually had a girlfriend, so I really didn't care that I didn't. But I oh, never, see, you never. You always said but I never, ever, ever. No, there was times I admit that I was trying, you know. But I'm telling you, never happened. Yeah. And you know what? You know what cracks me up though? If you are an attractive woman, okay, like you, Shannon, there's no quit. You could get lucky every single freaking night you go out because guys always say, "Oh yeah, okay." But but a guy is not automatic. Girl, automatic. No, it's yeah. Well, it depends on the girl. Man, even an ugly girl can get lucky because yeah. there's some ugly guy. Well, she hangs around long. Especially at the end of the night. At the end of the night. <laughs> After all the there. drinks. They all get better looking at closing time. Aren't you going to play that song? Do you hate country music that much that you will not play that song from Waylon Jennings? Yes. <laughs> Jeez, okay. It's tough to pull strange ass at the bar. <laughs> Jeez, okay. The later you go, the better. You go until they just get drunk, shut up till about midnight. Like my, you know, I'm telling you right now, women, they got, they hold, you know what, an attractive woman holds all the cards in life. Jen. Yes, that's true. I'm not, I'm telling you right now, now, it kind of, you got the monthly curse and all that crazy stuff you got to deal with. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, an attractive woman, on a an attractive woman has life oh if God. you play your cards right because there's always some, every freaking guy will do it, freaking anything. Now, you got to play your cards right because there's some jack wagon guys out there. Oh, there's a lot of jack wagon guys. You just In fact, I'll go ahead and say this. There isn't one divorced woman that I know or one divorced man that I know that isn't freaking generally miserable as hell because the guys can't find a good woman and the women can't find a good guy. Denise Johnson. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going I'm to... She found Jason. He's an alcoholic. He is not. No, I'm kidding, Jason. You're just a big hellbilly. Now, I want to tell you something right now. I want to tell you right now that I'm going to have a party one day and I'm going to introduce here's my single guy friends, here's the single woman. Go! And see no. what happens. <laughs> single party. Line up the guys go. on one side. Go! Go! Girls Match on up. another. <laughs> Go ahead and bump up. I'm serious. Not bunch ugly. Be gentlemen. Bunch of uglies bump up. Right. This is Zario Speedwagon. Speaking of breaking up, if you're breaking up. You know what? If you're breaking up today with your wife, your your husband, send them this song on your iPhone. On Class yeah. X Radio. Why am I getting a divorce today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. My court appearance at 9 in Boone County was canceled, so I get to stay for the whole show. Many of you all did not know that. I'm going to tell a funny story about my night out, and then after 8 o'clock, I am going to talk about farmers. And uh, if you listen to the Paul Harvey commercial during the Super Bowl, which I'm sure you enjoyed as much as I did, in the message that he had, I'm going to remind what I have been saying for years about farmers. And uh, I'm going to give a little message uh, after 8 o'clock, but until then, I'm going to tell a funny story, but before then... Uh, what do we have in traffic, if anything, Shannon the Traffic Girl? In Alexandria, there is an injury accident on South Looking Pike. And in Hamilton County, there's a disabled vehicle on Chester Road at Glendale Milford Road. All right. Um, this was probably, uh, it's weird how some nights you remember and other nights you don't. But this is like an epic <laughs> night in my life. And it, it is so funny. I'll share it. I think I've shared this before, but I'll share it again. All right, I hung out uh, during law school, and, and right after law school, with a group of guys that called themselves the Wasters. Their leader was Bill Tobin, uh, i.e. Tobin Construction Companies. Anyway, Bill was kind of the leader of the group, and Bill 
and his buddies went to Covington Catholic. There's Joe Agbers, uh, Jim Dahl, who uh, his dad was Dahl Plumbing in, in uh, Union. This was the first time I ever met him. And a uh, bunch of guys, and then I started hanging out with um, Bill because I was in a fraternity at Thomas More when he was a junior. So that's when I became friends with Bill. And uh, Mark Wintersheimer, I don't know, he was there kind of with me. Anyway, there's a big group of guys, and we're going to go out, okay? And we're all meeting at Bill's house over in Cres Crescent Springs, and we're going to get a limousine. Well, the first time I ever met Jim Dahl, a.k.a. Tater, who became Charlie Ann's godfather, he shows up at the party at Bill's house, getting ready to leave, and guess what he did? He told his wife, by the way, this marriage would not last. He, he was laughing at everybody because he said he... Now, I wasn't married. He left a note that said, I'm going to get some bread. Now, he didn't go get bread. He was going out all night with us. And he was laughing how his wife was going to get pissed that he left a note. Well, anyway, so we get in the limousine and our first stop is... Actually, we had two limousines. There were so many guys. We go down the glass menagerie where, to my knowledge, everybody strikes out. So everybody gets the idea to go to the conservatory, where, to my knowledge, everybody strikes out. Well, I don't think everybody was interested. It was kind of like, we're just going to go out stupid, get drunk, do the limousine thing. By the way, that's the last time I ever went out on a limousine party thing. You and were ball. Yeah, well, anyways. So then we go uh, down to Ruby's place on the river, over in Covington. What's the name of the place? For, uh, the Seneca. Not uh, the Seneca. Uh, Come on, it's not there anymore. Waterfront? The waterfront, thank you. All right, so we're at the waterfront. Now, I had broken off my engagement with my, was my, gonna be my first wife, and I was single, and I was drunk, and I had never, remember, I had never been, I must have been like 23. I had never gotten lucky before, ever. I'm talking to this beautiful, and I don't even like redheads, but she was beautiful. This beautiful redhead from Fort, uh, Fort Thomas. And I had the perfect setup. Why? I had bingle tickets for the next day. All right? So I'm talking to her, and I'm making progress. I mean, I'm really feeling that I'm making progress. So I go to the bathroom, the waterfront, and when I come back, she's gone. And not only is she gone, Tater, a.k.a. Jim Dahl, the guy that left a note saying, Honey, I'm going to go get a loaf of bread, and he ends up going to the guys. He's laughing like hell with Tim Sider, and I'm saying, what is, I've never, met, I've never met Jim before, and I'm sitting there with Mark Wintershire, and I says, what the hell is so funny? He, while I went to the bathroom, he told the beautiful redhead from Fort Thomas, I was gay. <laughs> oh my God. What, what do you call that? Blocker, 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 oh. blocker, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was so mad, so I can't even get Oh, that's wrong. Well, meanwhile, well, meanwhile, some way, somehow, the limousine left without me and went, Mark Wintersheimer and Jim Dahl. So we're stuck together, okay? So we get a taxi. And we go over to January's, all right? Well, then we end up at a party. We say, let's go to the party. My cousin Josh says there's a party down here in Covington. It was Todd McMurtry's house. And I am not kidding you. My cousin got so drunk. I left him for a minute. When I came back, some guys had put him upside down in a freaking garbage can. And he was passed out. I mean, he was upside down in a garbage can. So at this party, I mean, again, I'm like swinging and missing, you know, everywhere we go. Well, Jim Dahl, he hits on and gets a good response from the fattest, ugliest, and I'm not kidding you, front toothless woman. A slump bus. And we leave in a taxi, <laughs> and Mark Wintershammer in the back seat, and he's in the front seat, and he goes in for the move, and she rejects him. And I start laughing. Ha ah, ha You just got rich. I mean, I mocked it. I just met this guy tonight. I mocked the hell out of him. I said, let's see who's gay now, man. <laughs> but I'm not you kidding. just met this guy that I night? just met that guy. I just met that guy that night. And the, and he's the one that told the Yeah, yeah. He was a little jokester. Good. He, he, and I, he and I became good buddies and he became Charlie Ann's god godfather. But anyway, that's an example of my night out. I mean you got a limousine, you got all the nothing. Strike out once again.
But I'm not kidding, that redhead, I was making progress, but Jim Dalt blew it for me. Isn't that mean? Isn't that awful. mean? Yeah. Guys are supposed to help each other. Well, here, here's something that happened in uh, a snowshoe. Parker, Parker's, <laughs> Parker's being a blighter. He tells these pretty girls on the slope that, uh, I mean, he's going, he thinks Cameron and Cole like hockey. He has these girls believing they're freaking hockey players. <laughs> <laughs> they come over to the room. True story. Parker was so pissed off. They apparently go to their room. Parker's sitting there saying, oh my, he, he think we're hockey players. I'm like, girls come in. Cameron and Cole go, we're not hockey players. He's not hockey players. He's lying up. What the hell? Parker goes, are you kidding me? Parker had him fooled. It was yeah, fun. Parker had a good thing. Had a good there. thing going. You're never gonna see these girls again. Exactly. That's not like it's not like Cam. Yeah, it's not like Cam. I'm sure it was Cole probably we started. It sounds like something Cole would do to screw it up for the guy. <laughs> anyway. If you ever if you have some, some guy lay on some stuff on you, Shannon, and it was all BS, and What's you found out in time, <laughs> you found out in time. Well, yes. What's yes. the worst? They have a yacht. Yeah, yeah. You, give me give me the best BS a guy ever told you. Uh, oh, actually, I, I was told that he was a record producer. Ah! I, was, I was told by, by a guy who was a record producer, and he had a jankety chain on that was fake and like a hole in his shirt, and he told me that he was a big record <laughs> producer and he could make me yep. a star. I was like 19, but I still if, saw through it. If I, know, if I know what I know now, <laughs> and I was in my mid-20s, early 30s, and I was single, I would be the talent recruiter for some modeling agency. Right. <laughs> I mean, why would you not go, um, I search for talent, you know, modeling yeah. agencies, you know. You know, oh, boy, I think you'd be perfect. I mean, right. there's got to be guys that do that every day. Hey, so, fake in, fact, in, fact, in fact, I know a friend, I'll tell you off the air, I know, I got a, I got a friend whose wife, before they were married, got caught up in a fake guy doing that. Uh, Taking pictures. Show a little bit more. Show a little bit more. Don't ever take pictures. Uh huh. I'm so glad I'm. I'm, I, I'm so glad I'm not single. I'm not, I am not made for the freaking single life. Period. I, it's I, I, just, out there. I just. I just couldn't do it. I'd be freaking miserable. Single. Hard for a player. Oh my god. Now you seem to love it. <laughs> yeah, I got. All right. Here's. 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 All right. It's a country Sucks. song, but suck. No. Hey. It's, it's about ladies loving outlaws. Uh, Waylon Jennings is in country on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Give us a traffic report there, Shannon. In Alexandria, there is an injury accident on South Licking Pike. In Hamilton County, a disabled vehicle on Chester Road at Glendale Milford Road. An accident on Witten Road at West North Bend Road. And in Cincinnati, there is an accident blocking the left shoulder on I-71 southbound at Red Bank Road. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry during the Super Bowl, uh, the one commercial, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of worked through the commercials and watched the game and worked, and I missed a lot of the commercials, but I'll tell you right, when I heard Paul Harvey's voice and uh, those photo images that they ran through on the farmer, I mean, that really moved me. And of course, being a farm boy, I can definitely connect and relate to it. You know, on the eighth day, you know, God... Uh, made a farmer. And you know what? I'm watching that and of course what Paul Harvey focused on is the talents, the hard work of a farmer, the earthiness, the goodness of a farmer. And all of that is true. 100%. But if you go back and I have a article that I wrote years ago and in addition to that I've discussed it on the radio before, that our country, from local city councils all the way to the White House, would be so much better off if we elected farmers to every single public office, as opposed to the jack wagons that we have. And i got to do this from memory, but some of the reasons why I, have, I hold that belief is because, first off, farmers work hard. They are used to working hard from sunup to sundown. And guess what? Farmers don't get a day off. Christmas, animals have to be fed. 
and I grew up in this atmosphere. My dad, I guess when I was starting to work on the farm, my older brother Thad, my older brother Jed, and myself, Joe Schmiotti, and there might have been somebody else. We rotated Sunday duty, which means like once a month, every five weeks, you work 13 straight days on the farm during the summer. And I mean, I did this when I was 13 years old. But you learn how to work hard, sun up to sundown. Also, farmers get in less trouble than others because they work so there were times when I you know everybody else I hanging out with buddies that were going out every night to bars. I remember like at eight o'clock coming in from alone, it was like poof, you hit the pillow and you're out like a light. Another thing about farmers are is farmers take calculated risks and they even gotta take risks and deal with something that is so unpredictable, Mother Nature. It's really incredible. I mean, farmers borrow money to plant crops, then harvest, they pay the bank back. And I'm talking about any little setback can be devastating. They learn how to deal with those. Bottom line is, farmers know how to keep a budget. They have to. They live frugally. And guess what? Instead of going out and buying a new tractor every time they need one, they learn how to fix the tractor. They learn how to get the mileage of that tractor. I mean, I'm telling you right now, on our farm, we drove tractors till they literally died. And there's just so many other features of a farmer that if the politicians simply were farmers, we would be such a better, better, better country. I saw Frank Luntz on uh, Fox News last night on Andy's show talk about how that commercial was great for the heartland of America, but what if you're an inner city person, you know, you don't know farmers and you don't connect to the farmers and, and he kind of basically blew it off, you know. He said like, for example, um, the country's 10% black and only 1% of farmers are black. And I'm like, well, so farmer, blacks can't appreciate what a farmer does? Does that change anything? Hell no, it doesn't change anything. I told the story how my dad, when he ran a mass unit during the Korean War, he chose, as all of his assistant managers, if you would, people from the Midwest. He chose the farm boys from Wisconsin and Minnesota and Illinois and Iowa because they were the most dependable, the most reliable. By the way, let's not forget that. They were the most dependable and the most reliable. They get to work on time. And they work till the job that one of the work, you know, I owe it all to my dad. I owe all to my dad my work ethic. That just didn't happen. I mean, I would have rather watched football and played around and not worked as hard as I did, but he made me. But you know what I learned from my dad? And the politicians never get this either. It's five o'clock and there's 500 bales on and it looks like it's going to rain. You don't say. It's 5 o'clock. No, you don't. you got to put in the 500 bales if it takes you to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, no matter when it is. And I learned that you don't watch the clock. You become project-oriented. Very project-oriented. i got some young lawyers, God love them. Man, oh man. Some of them have good work ethics, some I don't know so much. But farmers, we would be better off if we had farmers. Those of you that ever grew up on a farm or don't understand or don't get it, just trust me. Farmers. All right, Garrett, you've got a good song ready to play? No. Well, pick one. Well, Bee Gees. No. What? No, 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 no. No, no, no. All right. Uh... How about some Molly song? Molly Hatchet, Follow the Peacemakers. I like that song. We'll play that song on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Anything going on out there, Shannon, in traffic? In Alexandria, there is an injury accident on South Licking Pike. In Hamilton County, an accident on Witten Road at North Bend Road. And in Cincinnati, the left shoulder is blocked on I-71 southbound at Red Bank Road, exit 9. An accident on Ohio 562 at the Norwood Lateral, westbound, east of Ohio 4. And an accident on Dutch Colony Drive at Winton Road. Very good. Uh, I want to continue my little uh, thing on the farmers for a little bit longer. 
And of course, I know it's not going to bother uh, Jarrett and and uh, Jake because they're looking for Garrett for the G. Garrett and Jake because they are texting friends and looking for hot models for the wall. Um, you know something that Chuck sent to me in a text. I can't believe I forgot that one about farmers. Is plain, simple, common sense. And I'm going to tell you something else too. You take any issue, any issue that's got us in trouble right now in America, and you put the farmers to it, problem solved. Guns? Are you kidding me? Farmers know how to use guns. You know, guns are for hunting. Guns are for protection. You're not going to have any issue with guns with farmers, are you? Balanced budget? Are you kidding me? Even immigration. You know what? Immigration, they're fair, aren't they? By golly, some farmers need those immigrants to help them farm. How about this? They can take care of themselves because they can raise crops that they can eat. You know, they can take care of themselves. A little self-preservation there. They don't need anybody. Or as many people. Of course, they get sick like everybody else. They need doctors and so forth and so on. But it really is amazing when you think about farmers. And that commercial, that Super Bowl, it still resonates with me. A um, couple other fun things. Uh, Deborah, I just told her name is Deborah, one of the jurors in the Dirty.com case, I talked to her last night at length. Outstanding human being. She said, I was with you all from the beginning. And she was our strongest, along with the foreman, the strongest supporter. And... Um, Great insights. And you know what? I had a great compliment from her. You know what she said? She goes, man, I love listening to you. She goes, the others put me to sleep. When you got up and spoke, it woke me up. <laughs> it's good not to have people sleep on you. Now, coming up is Valentine's Day. Garrett, are you going to try to woe somebody with a special Valentine's Day gift? Absolutely not. <laughs> How come I predicted that was going to be your answer? Yeah, actually, this is the worst time of the year to like hook up with somebody or try to. Uh, nah, Christmas you know, is isn't it? Then you got to buy him a gift. What's wrong with having to buy a woman a gift? You got to buy him a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Self-explanatory. <laughs> and then you wait till the day after. It gives you a full the day calendar after. year. My. God. The day after is my birthday, so. You're, you're February 15th? Yeah. Start going out with Shannon, May wow. 16th. Start going out with Shannon on February 16th. When's the Elton John concert? April 3rd. Well, you got plenty of time. Perfect. Jake, what about you now? Look out that night. Now, now Jake, 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 Jake has a regular gal. Are you ready for Valentine's Day? Not ready. No plans. So no plans? I got to figure something out. A box of chocolates. Do something yeah. original. Just, just a box, box of chocolates. Swing by Walgreens. <laughs> a Maybe a Frisch's gift card. A box of chocolates from Walgreens. Hey, Amen. Man, that's when you're saying, I love you, babe. <laughs> What's the best Valentine's Day gift you've ever gotten? That I've gotten? The love. Just the love. Oh, oh that is so gay. <laughs> it is not. It's true. Isn't that what you want? The best Valentine's gift? You guys do that white what? castle, black castle. Wait, 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 oh, wait, yeah. wait, 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 what, what, go back to this White Castle thing. What were you I didn't go to no, so I have not been to White, White Castle, Castle for Valentine's Day. But they do have a nice romantic dinner at White Castle apparently every year on Valentine's Day. Shannon knows firsthand in the last seven years. <laughs> romantic dinner. <laughs> That's, seven That's years. an oxymoron. <laughs> romantic <laughs> dinner at yeah. White Castle. It's a tradition. Jake, what about you? What? What's the best gift you've ever got? Best gift? I don't know. We don't do. Valentine's Day oh, too big. Oh, no, 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 All right, guys, I'm going to give you a tip in advance of Valentine's Day, all right? Here is the best thing that you can do on Valentine's Day, and it's guaranteed to have the best effect you can do, okay? Well, now, if you can make something, you make something. <clears throat> write them in your own way. Screw the Hallmark cards. Write them a love letter. 
Yes, that's sweet. Yeah, see? See? And flowers. See? See? A love letter and flowers is just perfect. Uh, there you go. I rest my case right there. <laughs> Endorsed by the one woman in the room. That's what counts. But that's why you're single, Garrett, because you don't get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm uh, Girlfriend, wife. I'm single. Single uh, now. And they worked it out for me so. But you weren't. But you weren't. You were recently. You're Let me recently tell you single. why I'm single, people. It's because I want to be. All right. right. Yeah. I like to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that one yeah. yeah. one with yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Sure, sure you want to be. Single. Sure you want to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, screw sure. you guys. <laughs> okay. Screw you guys. It sounds like Gary Carmen. Screw you guys. I'm going, going home. home. <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah, I'm gonna have a nice romantic dinner by myself. I'm gonna cook everything. Oh, you're lying. Probably. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah. You really are. No. I got that. <laughs> I was gonna say that sounded really. Yeah, good. it's next Thursday. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that. Yeah. Probably get a piece. So at least go out. Six or a beer. <laughs> watch some basketball. There you go. Perfect night. If I can find a. Are you dating girl, any, Are you dating anybody right now? No. No main <laughs> squeeze. No, but I've got. No to. night. No no late night booty call. <laughs> oh, I shot no up on that one. He on shot that up one. on that one. I hit. <laughs> I hit the nerve there, didn't I? <laughs> Bingo! If there's a girl out there that loves to like watch sports every night of the week, Garrett Truman. Right here, I have three passions: music, sports, music. and you see basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I got balls so under sports. <laughs> oh my god, you're hopeless, dude. You're hopeless. <laughs> I know that already, though. Hey, seriously, why don't we do this? Why don't we make this? Let's get Garrett. A date for Valentine's Day yeah. on our show. No. No. Yeah. No. Call it, yeah. lady. Yeah. We get pictures. <laughs> yeah, no, we get pictures. Naked, what if we get naked No. Pics. What if we get a really <laughs> hot your nudie pics in? What if we get a really <laughs> What if we get a really hot pic, a hot chick for you, man? That happens and yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> that's that's what I'm trying to say. Old Billy's a listener. Let's get a hot hot chick for Shannon's a date. probably got some friends. Yeah, you, I do hair. I have a lot of She's friends. she's friends with my daughter. Yeah. That's how I met her. <laughs> she's the same age as well, you're I'm a little older. Oh, yeah. No, she's married. She's married. Oh, married. married. And, no, 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 no. I got two daughters. One's married and one is too liberal. Oh, God. I, wouldn't I can't believe you I would, raised a liberal I, I would, daughter. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend her to anybody. Oh. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I love you, Erica. <laughs> Here's Red Rider Lunatic Fringe on Class X Radio. Is that good? This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen of the American Jury, we give you Shannon the Traffic Reporter. In Alexandria, there is an injury accident on South Looking Pike in Hamilton Avenue, an accident on Witten Road at West Northman Road in Cincinnati, an accident blocking the left shoulder on I-71 southbound at Red Bank Road, an accident on Ohio 562 Norwood Lateral westbound, and in Cincinnati, an accident on Dutch Colony Drive at Winton Road. Very good. You do that fantastically. Oh, well, thanks, Lord. Eric. <laughs> You're so sweet, Garrett. <laughs> you know what? Somebody sent a text message that says that the only reason Valentine's Day would not be celebrated with a couple is if the man doesn't want to. In other words, the women the always want to. want to. I've never heard of yes. a woman that doesn't want to. That's true. Yeah, good point. I'm not going to tell you what some people... Who was that? I, 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 no, I'm not going to tell you what some people said about your recent commentary. About <laughs> they, they probably think I'm gay or something. Yeah, real clever, uh, Billy. No, 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 Back no. Back to your no. farms. Uh-uh. Back to your shanties. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Back to my mansion. What are your big plans for <laughs> Valentine's Day? My big plans for Valentine's Day? I haven't made any yet. But I have some in mind. You I have work. Tell you I am. Yeah, I am contemplating something. Tell you're doing the radio. The radio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn radio. <laughs> radio. Can we do some Valentine's Day? No. Nope. Damn radio. I'm not kidding you. Those are the two words. Damn radio. <laughs> oh, I'm Why don't you have her in one of these more? Oh my God. You know what I've told her, and this is the truth. Can you imagine the rating uptick? If she, I mean, because everybody would be wondering what she sounds like, what she looks like. It would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she just won't do it. 
crazy. You know what we ought to do? We call her. I'm a no, I'd get in trouble. Number. Here, I'd, get, I'd get in trouble for that too. Have somebody on that we say is her. It's not her. That would not really get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> what, are your, what are your plans? What, what are your guys' plans for Valentine's Day or V Day? I don't have plans for Valentine's Day yet. Uh, hint, hint. <laughs> I might just Garrett. go have a couple of drinks with friends from work. I don't have any. Want to watch some hoops? <laughs> watch some hoops. <laughs> watch some hoops. <laughs> you know, one of the most, one of the most, uh, as a lawyer, one of the worst possible messages you can get is from somebody who says. Good morning, and your name. Um, this is so and so. Um, I'm suing you. Which no? Which courtroom do I go to? And you're like, oh, uh, who are you, and what courtroom are you talking about? Like, well, what the what the hell am I forgot to put on my calendar? Oh boy, <laughs> who was it? I ain't gonna tell you. What well, do you have to be somewhere? I don't think I do, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of freaked out here. I'm like, I said to my staff, and I said, help me. <laughs> help me, Ron. Help me. No, help me figure Ronda out who this is. Office. Please? You got Rhonda in your office? A Rhonda, no. I like we got that Rondo. Song, help, help, help me, Rhonda. Help, help. Yeah, we do got Rhonda Spry. We're going to play that song for Rhonda. Do we have a song lined up? Nah, we're not. Jeez. <laughs> once again, once again, she we know why he's singing. So <laughs> we want to sing. What? <laughs> on Valentine's Day. Oh. Hey, uh, hey, would you like to... Uh, Doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> I like what I do. I like just doing my thing. Oh, I remember. I remember. Me. I remember who it was. I remember who it was, and my partner is covering it. Oh. Relief. Freaking relief. Partner's about to text you. Call uh, wow. I want to go to court with you one of these days. I tell you, it's a treat. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's a treat. <laughs> I'll be in court today at 1. Embarrass the hell out um, of you. You want to get, wear that suit and tie and sit at the table? Nah, I'm aware of the juror told me. The, the, <laughs> the juror told me that my closing argument, that she wished she had it audio taped and videotaped. Well, she's in luck. We record everything for a reason. No, right? no my closing argument. No. Federal court couldn't do it. Oh, that's bull. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still have to judge Burlesby. They'll sanction you and put. You know what? You're not even before him. Hey, no, 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 no. I just saved you, pal. Come on, let me. No, 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 no. Hey, we love you, Burlesman. He treated judge. He treated me very well. Hey, you're too much. I want to tell you something. You don't mess with any judge. I tell you right now, you certainly don't mess with federal judges. You know what he reminded us before the trial started? My reputation in the courtroom precedes me. He says, <laughs> he says I just want you guys to know, because we had a little bit of skirmishes between lawyers. He goes, this is the Federal Eastern District Court of uh, Kentucky, and I want to remind everybody that uh, misconduct in this courtroom is criminal contempt punishable by up to six months in jail and um, a fine. And I'm like, wow. I said, that's enough to keep you in line, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> six, six months in jail. Uh, six months in jail, I'll behave, Judge. <laughs> I was going to behave anyway, but now I'm really going to behave. Six months is easy. Yes, sir, no, six sir. Six in the county, Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> Back in <on> six. <laughs> <laughs> that's when he last had a girlfriend. Four chickens. Turn him, turn him, turn him in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Those are my chickens, in. bitch. <laughs> 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 Rick James. Rick we, James. Hey, hey, we ordered a Rick James picture yet? No. Nope. We got to get a Rick James poster in here since we've adopted him. <laughs> oh, Rick my James, God. James, bitch. <laughs> That's close. Oh. Clayton Bixby. It's all under control, baby. Clayton Bixby. And by the way, you don't have enough bits from uh, South Park. We need more South Park. Oh, yeah, we, we, we don't have any. Let's play. Uh, screw you guys. Screw you guys. I'm going home. Screw you guys. I'm going home. Uh, Farley. Farley? Farley, 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 Farley. I always play that. Farley, Farley, Farley. Way to have some dead air time there, Gary. <laughs> it's always good radio. <laughs> that sounds ready. I'm looking for it. Else. I'll start talking about freaking farmers again. I'll find you in a second. As soon as you do. Oh, that's the other thing about farmers. Suck, by the farmers way. get physical exercise. They don't have all the freaking health problems. Yeah. Farmers live forever, man, because they keep moving. Yeah, There's another thing. I'm going to find my little farmer essay. 
and repost it. Just sit me in my office. What about sitting in your there. office? In your Throw computer? Be a farmer. Be a farmer. I, you know what? I'd like to take you out to put you in and put in hay sometime. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only if you had to do it, you could do it. There you go. That's the Rick James poster we need. <laughs> wow, look at that Jerry girl. <laughs> <laughs> God. 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 I keep Richard? thinking of you. I keep thinking Richard? of you. God. Don't do it. <laughs> Why do you think of me? Fat guy look up. Oh, oh, she's... Oh. Jake! Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, man, where's the, where's the delay button? That was a dump. We dumped it. Yeah, we dumped it. We dumped it. Yeah, we dumped, we dumped it. it. Nice Here's job. Cena. I think it's time for a song. <laughs> time for a song. Man, oh, man, oh, man. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. What's going on out there in uh, traffic there? In Alexandria, there is an injury accident on South Looking Pike. In California, Kentucky, an accident on Stonehouse Road at Flag Springs Pike. In Cincinnati, an accident on Dutch Colony Drive at Witten Road. An accident on Ohio 562, Norwood Lateral, westbound, east of Ohio 4. An accident on Grand Avenue at Westwood Avenue. In Cincinnati, also a disabled vehicle with the right shoulder blocked on I-74. And in Hamilton, an accident blocking the right shoulder on I-275 westbound at US-42. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, I spoke uh, last, uh, I think it was Thursday, at NKU leadership class. And I spoke about leadership, plain, flat-out leadership. And I get a little bit tired. Actually, I get a lot tired of everybody talking about leadership this and leadership that and there really isn't any. And when people talk about leadership and they're really meaning just the fact that uh, well I want everybody to do what I say even though what I want to do is stupid. <laughs> it's not leadership. In fact, thank God there's some opposition to jack wagons. But but, 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 every single night. I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I can't listen to Fox News. I can't listen to the local news. I can't listen to any of it because all it is over and over and over again are people that hold position of power and authority. How? I have no idea. And when they get in those positions of power and authority, they make stupid decisions that affect all of us. And we all pay the price. And it just keeps going on and on and on. I mean, like the streetcar. How in anybody's right mind can you justify spending all that freaking money on six freaking streetcars that are going to go from point A to point B and nobody wants to go between point A and point B? Makes no sense, does it? Absolutely not. And it's full speed ahead, by the way. It's full speed ahead. I mean, there's absolutely no question that they want to go full speed ahead. Money, money, money. They have no idea. How about this? They're going to go to court with Duke, and if the mayor, the mayor says, if Duke wins, well, they'll have to pay for all those you know, utilities to be moved. What? And if we win, they'll then Duke will have to pay it. How do you play Russian roulette with taxpayers like that? You know what? One thing about David Mann, and I'll guarantee you that this is why, and I'm sure my politics, I think he's probably Democrat, a little liberal, but I'll tell you something about David Mann. He's at least a freaking adult. And he was mayor. And I'll bet you what's driving him to get in the race, and hopefully there's enough people to elect him. Although I don't think so. I think, it, I think this is Cranley's worst nightmare. By David Mann getting in the race, you got one woman, you know, and I, I don't know how Cranley wins with Mann in the race, but wouldn't it be great if Mann would win and we'd have a little bit of uh, 
adults, you know, people that, uh, you know, know how to budget their money and so forth and so on. Would that be great? Would it? Would it? Would it? Would it? Would it? Would it? <laughs> any final comments around the room? Jake, you got any final comments? Uh, going to the hockey game tonight up in Columbus, LA Kings. That's it. Well, what a great time you're going to have. <laughs> are you taking your girlfriend? Yeah. Aww. Oh, you poor bastard. What are you doing with her on Valentine's oh, Day? We don't have any plans yet. We talked about a couple's massage, maybe. Oh, oh couple's <laughs> massage. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is she going to massage your back? <laughs> It's funny because my back is a little tight. <laughs> what, what about you, Chef? What, 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 what do you got planned for the rest of the day? I'm going to run. No, I don't, I'm off today. so. Well, why don't you tell everybody how much you run? Eight miles a day. That is incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. We I run eight and a half miles a day. Oh, you do? We're yeah. going to race, right? I would beat you. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Sprinting, whatever you want to do, distance. Distance. Yeah. You want to do distance? Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Think you'll be done. Okay. We need to set this up. You are so full of it. No, I'm not. <laughs> God. A lot of speed. Did you run track? Triathletic. Did you run track at Anderson? Go to pretty much every sport. <laughs> uh, Can you hit the curveball? No, absolutely, I hit a curve. By the way, I couldn't hit the curveball. I played baseball at Covington Latin. This is funny. Uh, I was the leadoff hitter. I only played baseball one year, my senior year coming to Latin school, and I was really short. Leadoff hitter. All right, I would either walk or strike out every freaking time. I would start <laughs> a leadoff hitter. First, I'll, 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 I, I, I will never forget my first baseball game. We played Highlands, okay, and. Um, I was sitting there, we played their, their junior varsity, okay, because they were older than us. And I never forget, I walked twice, struck out twice, and stole two bases. And I had a pretty good day in the field. But I never forget the first time I'm up to play, and I saw my first curve ball, and I was like, wow. <laughs> how do you hit that thing? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How, and, of course, as you know, in the major leagues, there's a lot of people, when you go to wooden bats, and the curve ball. That can't Trouble happen. with the curve. Yeah. It's amazing. I don't know how to hit it. I mean that, that ends a lot of careers. Six, six, you know the only the only thing that I can say about like baseball is that if you start out you just can't jump in. You know, if you play little league baseball and you just have that grand it's like big time hockey. You know, it's that gradual playing yeah. a little bit better, a little bit that's how you do how it. You mature. You just it. you mature it's it's those incremental ways that you do it. You just can't jump in and hit a major league curveball. I don't think it's the same with football, same with any sport. If you play it from when you're little, you gradually build up to it. But I could not hit the curveball. But I struck out and walked every time. <laughs> I had a small strike zone. And I remember my girlfriend was there too. Holly Dybert was there. I was next love and she, long ball. And she lived in Fort Thomas. I was so freaking right, embarrassed. Right. We lost to the freaking home team and my girlfriend was in the stands. Hey, did you see my game? I struck out twice, walked twice. <laughs> yeah, not the worst. Played short stuff. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. I was the star of our baseball team that didn't win a game. Hey, let's get a lead off hitter, league. lead off hitter, and shortstop. Bulldog softball team. Let's see, uh, Jake, would you play that softball? Yeah, I, I played baseball. You can be a a bulldog, a bulldog, a bulldog <laughs> nation softball team or a class X softball team or both. Uh, I don't know how well Bob Michaels would do on the. No, yeah. Mike. Hey, Bob Michaels, you're not invited to try out for our team. Yeah, you can coach or something. Probably, we'll probably see. Bulldog Nation. Bulldog Nation. Well, we can include we can include the Spry's. We like them. We don't like anybody else on the station, but we like Spry's. Just teasing you guys, the Class X people. Except, uh, oh, I tell you, who's the worst umpire of all time? Is freaking Wild Man. He he. The celebrity game out there at Florence Freedom Park. He would call strikes on my team. Oh, he was he was terrible. Icky Woods and I were. I was the pitcher. Icky was the catcher. Wild Man sucked oh, yeah. as an umpire. Wild man's a word. Every dog has their day. Tomorrow's yours. We'll be back with some radio superbity.